Remember, we're looking at, at uh, structures in general. We've gone through our first type. Maybe it's our first type and a half because we did uh, trusses, but we did both planar and uh, we spent one day last period on space trusses, three-dimensional. So that's the only uh, it's, it's a fancy way to say 2D and 3D trusses. Um, as you saw, the 3D ones get complicated as any of the 3D problems do just by virtue of uh, how difficult they are to draw and visualize and like. So we're not going to spend any more time with that, specifically that type of thing. Uh, now we're going to look at what are called frames. Remember the difference between the two? What? Two force members and yeah. trusses. And yeah. Trusses are two force members only. Meaning, uh, we just simply pin them at the end. Even though that's not the reality of it. If you go look at any truss structure, just climb up in the attic of your garage or something, you'll see several trusses up there. Every joint is not just a simple pin joint. There's actually a plate over that that's probably been nailed in or uh, probably glued and screwed. Uh, something in there to hold it. Uh, to, to stabilize that joint. So what we're doing are, are very conservative analyses. Uh, and frames. Yeah, least, at least one three force member. Lots of two force members possible, but at least one three force member. Now that could be um, if we took into account its weight, it uh, could be just simply another load on it somewhere rather than at the ends. If it's at the ends, we can still count that as a two-force member because any forces at the end we can combine into a single force at that end and a single force at the other end, still a two-force member. Um, so we'll have several different types of examples, such as start right off with one. Uh, we have a cantilever section. What that means is it's embedded in the wall. That automatically means it's not a two-force member because there's the support reaction uh, in terms of the forces there and also the moment supplied there. So uh, we use the term two-force and three-force members, but if there's a moment in the problem, in the member, it's no longer a two-force member. And then we've got another little piece that's uh, attached to it with a simple pin. That end is roller supported. And the load on it is such that we've got a 10 kilonewton load there at 36.9 degrees. You're crying. Wait a second. The angles can only be. 15, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Maybe a 180, but I don't know what's this 30. But remember, these are just made up for fun. So we did, I just thought it'd be really fun to have something different. So there we go. And then we have a uniform load distribution, something like that. Now, we haven't seen one of those before, but this is exactly what it would look like if we took the weight of that member into account. So maybe. Maybe this first part was real light, but the second part's not light, not light enough to ignore. So we put in a, what's called a uniform load distribution. And we'll talk more about those later when we uh, get into them in real detail. But that's a load per 
meter length of the beam. So if I can give you a couple lengths there, let's say that's two meters, two meters, and that's two meters. If that's a two meter section with a four kilonewton per meter load, then it's got an eight kilonewton load on it. That, that total load is eight kilonewtons. Uh, other ways to do that, uh, uh, snow loads do that kind of thing, of course, and uh, just stored materials. Uh, if you've got a lot of people expected in a room, you'd want that as a, as a probably a distributed load, something like that. But they're very easy to handle, uh, as I'll show you in a second. And uh, it's, You've actually done this type of thing before um, in vaguely similar circumstances. All right, so we do our usual business of free body diagram. Let's label the points just for reference. Now, typically, uh, if we are doing the reactions for this, we have too many unknowns because we have uh, two, three unknowns at the uh, wall end because there's the uh, magnitude and direction of the support force and the magnitude of the moment supplied there plus there's another reaction out here with one unknown so that would be four unknowns if we look at the whole beam but there's no big deal we can take it apart and look at it in pieces so we'll uh, do our usual we'll replace the uh, the loads. I guess we could uh, turn that one around. Just looking at the load that's on there. So we'll do that. So there's some support reaction at the wall, but including a moment because of the embedded nature of that support. And then, of course, we've got the load. And it's up to you whether you want to break it into components right there or not. Have to do it eventually anyway. And then uh, some kind of reaction here at that pinned end. And maybe we can figure out something about it. Maybe we can. So I'll just keep them in the same order I did. So the only difference here to anything we've done before is that we have three or more forces on a single member. In this one, we happen to have four. The two end forces the moment and the intermediate load. How many unknowns on this part? or the magnitude and direction. It's the same thing either way. We don't know anything about the support A and we don't know the moment M. So that's five unknowns. So no, no great sense in writing out the equations. We're not going to be able to solve this system. We have five unknowns, three equations. What do we do? What? Yeah, we add on the other part because it connects the two. Certainly does with the reaction at B. 
So we've got a, a single reaction like that at C. And what do I draw at B? If I've drawn this on this end, what do I draw on that end? Same thing or equal and opposite? Equal and opposite. Because if this is what's being done to it, it does the opposite to the other one. So we have Bx there, By there. Remember, I'm just guessing which way those go. It's not uh, terrifically important that we that we waste any time on getting those right ahead of time. If we can, with a, a two or three seconds thought about it, it's worth it. But then, other than that, it's not really worth it. Now, with this uniformly distributed load, you know that we're going to need to um, sum the forces. Uh, but we have three unknowns, so we're going to need to do something besides just sum the forces. We're going to have to sum the moments as well. And we can't sum the moments for a uniformly distributed load like that. We just don't. Well, we can. It's an integral. We have to integrate the whole thing. But it turns out that it's, it's the very same type of thing we do with other uniform bodies. For example, the Earth. We don't take the Earth as being little pieces of mass spread out over a, a well, a planet-sized distance. We act as if everything is concentrated at a single point. And if you remember when we did uh, Physics 1, we started with everything was a particle and treated like that without even talking about it. So we do the same thing here. We take out the uniformly distributed load and replace it with a single load that represents the same thing. It'll supply the same moment and the same forces. We'll work with that more in a little bit. This is very easy because this is a load that doesn't change as we go along. But there are other possibilities. We could have all kinds of loads on uh, pieces that get greater and greater to one end. We're going to have to handle all those, but it's not going to be a big deal when we get there. You'll, uh, you'll pick it up very, very quickly because you're the smartest students I've ever had. <laughs> all right, so there we go. And that's on tape. <laughs> okay, what now? Is that a hand up? Bx equals zero. Yeah, well now, now we start solving it because this one we can do. We've got three unknowns. We've got three equations at our disposal. Once we know Bx and By, we now only have three unknowns on this side and we can solve for it too. So you can tell by inspection, what did you already give us? Bx equals zero. Yeah, you can tell already this one equals zero because there's no other vertical component on that side, so it must be. Things getting simple. In fact, you don't have to do a big deal. You can do B, Y, and C without any great effort. C is what? No, no, no. You, I mean, you can you can come up with the value now. You can just look at it, and with your experience, you know that the two together must equal eight kilonewtons. So clearly, I've got one of them wrong. And by symmetry, they must be equal. So they must be four kilonewtons each. And in fact, I have by upside down. Which makes sense. Uh, if we didn't have the AB part of the beam there, then the B end of the little part would fall down, so it's got to be pushed back up. All right. 
so we can solve then the other part. It's it's up to you whether you want to turn this around now and make it four kilonewtons or leave it as minus four kilonewtons as drawn. Uh, it's six one and a half dozen another, I guess. Just be careful with it because you got to get it right. My preference is once I know something, I like to fix it, especially if it means I don't have a negative sign in the problem. So I'll now put it in as correct, and I can even fix that one too. Which is, again, why I suggest you take notes in chalk. It's that easy to fix. Alright, now you can solve the, the other parts of that one. So, take a couple seconds, chug through that end. I want to make sure you know how to do it, especially since there's a moment in there. Just to make sure you got it right. AX is pretty easy to come up with. You can come up with that almost by uh, inspection, but that's just you summing the forces in the X direction in your head anyway. kind of thing that endears you guys to my heart as my favorite students ever. Alright, so just all knock that one out. Get, uh, we need to find AX, AY, and M. Somebody should have said, oh, I'll do AX and then take the rest of the day off because that's the easy one. Nobody did, so I get it. having trouble with the summing the forces. Alright, I'll go ahead and put that one up while you work out the last part. So, pretty clear that AX equals sine 36.9.
cosine 36.9 down and by down. So we can't solve that one. Two unknowns. Oh, we, yeah, we're, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we do know. I was like, wait, I saw it. <laughs> oh, calm down. You know BY, maybe I didn't. All right, so we can get AY. What do you get on that one then? 12. 12 kilonewtons. How do we find, let's see, what are we missing then? Uh, oh, we're missing the moment. So how do we find it? The moments must sum to zero. So we can do it that way. About which point? Doesn't matter. Maybe one's easier than another to choose, but it doesn't matter. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe about this point. Takes that force out of it leaves those two in, takes AX out of it as it goes through there. So we still have two forces. If we did this point, we'd still have that force and that force. If we did this point, we'd still have that force. And that. So it doesn't really matter. Either way, we're going to have two forces in there. Uh, so the mathematics is not going to be simpler at any way. So we'll do, we'll do the midpoint. We'll do it Moments summed about the blue dot. <laughs> Counterclockwise moments equal clockwise. Oh wait, what do we do about the fact this moment's over here, not here? Huh? Doesn't matter. Remember, a moment is a free vector. Forces are sliding vectors, so the moment applies uh, on the whole piece. It's counterclockwise, so we'll go ahead and put it over there. Um, and then both of the forces, AY and BY, supply moments in the other direction. So it's AY times 2. And we know AY and BY, which we also know, even I know it now, times 2 as well. Each of the two forces is 2 meters from either end. So we can find then the moment, practically do it in your head, AY, 2 times 12, 24 plus 12, 36. Is that right? How come that's not what I got there? Did I do it wrong in my head? 2 times 12 is 24, plus 2 times, oh, not 6, times 4 is 80, so it's 34, or 30, 32. Thirty-two kilonewton meters. Okay. If we use advanced mathematics, we get the right answer. So you break the thing into whatever pieces you need to to solve it. Trouble? Yeah. How come I don't understand how you have a moment if x plus sum is zero? Is it only the moment for the first? Like, are you just that's, regarding that's the second? That's this. We're looking for the moment supplied by the embedded support okay. at the wall. So that m there on the drawing is the same as 
this in here, the unknown that we were looking for. And it was counterclockwise, so I put it over here on the counterclockwise side. Those are both counterclockwise moments. Do you not have to worry about the other connected part? Sure, I have to worry about it, but I worried about it by having the connection in there. It's in there. That that that's what the the B supports are. The B reactions are there. That's the connection with the other piece. Okay. There's no additional moment due to that connection because it's a simple pin. If it wasn't, then we have, you're right, we'd have more work to do. We'd have another moment there. Okay. But we couldn't solve that because that would be then statically indeterminate and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't solve that. We don't have enough pieces. Not yet. We will next turn. All right, questions on that one? Before we ramp it up a little bit. Okay, another frame, which means just there's at least one three force member, perhaps more. Okay, here's a wall with A horizontal beam coming out here with a simple pin support there. At midpoint, we have a beam that runs up to another simple pin support there. That's two and a half meters there. Two and a half meters there, and this is two meters. And that's not all. We still need a load on it. And so. There's a pulley there. With a cable running over it. And then our load is on that. Hundred kilogram load there and uh, half a meter radius on the pulley. Pre-tested, ran this in my uh, basement last night, worked great. So label the points A, B, Call the center of the pulley C. I guess that's for center. D where that connects. E where that one connects. It's not crucial that the cable be pink, but it sure is nice because this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So just like the NFL. I can waste a lot of money on pink stuff instead of actually just giving it to cancer research. <laughs> okay. A little bit of little bit of commentary there. I do like to slip that in occasionally. All right, there you go. And we want to find the uh, reactions at E and A and the forces at C and B. Make sure those connections are strong. So find the reactions E and A, which is just our usual thing. Those are pin supports, so they 
uh, we typically break those into horizontal vertical components. No difference here. And forces at uh, C and B as well. And we can do whatever it is we need to do to get there. Suggestions. You can find them in any order. We're going to have to find them all eventually. So any parts we can do, Start see how we're doing. Start at C because that's where you have the unknown mass on it. Start, start at C, the joint C. I just want to understand. We can, we can, we we may need to do uh, big pieces of it. We may need to break it apart. Well, let's do this. Let's let's at least see if we can determine what the reactions are. So we'll we'll take the object. Kind of sketch it out like that. Because all we care about is the reactions at E and at A. And there's a load there. So I'm not worrying about any of the internal parts. Maybe this will help. Maybe, maybe it won't. We have to pick some direction. Let's put them both in the same direction. Not worried about being wrong. And what's the load there? 100 kilograms, right? No, of course not. Maybe we should worry about being wrong. What's the load? Load is forces or moments. Kilograms is... Yeah, that's a mass. So... Alright, can we solve that? of any of those. We can't find all of them because there's four unknowns. We only have three equations. Can we find any of the magnitudes? Yeah, shouldn't we be able to find uh, EX and then AX? by summing the moments about either A or E. So we can at least get a start on it. Once we find either one of them, we know the other one. So we can sum the moments about point A. We get, uh, oh, it's actually pretty easy. We get EX times its moment arm which is two meters equal to 
the load app. Five and a half meters is the moment arm on that, isn't it? Because of the pulley, that's just a little bit of the pulley. Easy to miss that, so be careful. Uh, we get EX and thus AX equal to 2698, sound right? Okay, so good, we, we found two of them. Uh, the best we can do with the other directions is we just know that between the two of them, they've got to oppose the 98, the 981 newtons, but we can't do any better than that. So, what next? some smaller part of it and there's not really that I know of any way to look at these and know specifically what to do next you have to just keep going you have to go into it until sooner or later you've got all the things you were looking for we've got uh, we, we had um, eight unknowns we've got two of them done so we still have six more to go we better get busy we can do the member EDB. We're going to have to. We're going to need the force of B anyway. We can do ABC. We're going to have to. We need the force anyway. We can do A, B, and C with or without the pulley. We have all kinds of choices. What do you feel like? ABC? Yeah. All right, we'll do ABC. By popular demand, we'll do A, B, and C. Trouble with that, uh, well, I, we do know AY, so at least we are bringing some known into it. So that, that's kind of a help. Um, we still don't know AY. We do know AX. Uh, same way I drew them here. Remember, AX came out as positive, so we were right with that one. Is this the same? Do I draw them the same way, or is, do I draw them equal and opposite to this AX, AY? Yes, yeah, it's, it's still the same joint. That joint hasn't changed any. The parts that we're looking at has changed a little bit, but the, uh, the joint hasn't changed at all. Uh, what do I do about B? I have this, this piece coming down at B. Well, like any other pinned joint, I we typically break it into its two components, so will that work? Oh, wait, 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 wait. No. If B connects to a two-force member, we'll know the direction. That's one less unknown. Is EDB a two-force member? Either is or it isn't. Either is or it isn't. 
Trevor, Mr. Mr. Raptor, are you voting? That's it. Is that is that what that was, or is it just man, I have a headache? A little bit both. A little bit both. <laughs> so what's your vote? We'll ignore your headache. Uh, I don't think it's. I mean, we care. But it'll, what's your vote? I say no. No, it's not a two force member. You say no, it's not, or no, he's wrong. <laughs> two votes for no, it's not a two force member. And three abstentions. I don't say yes, it is. I'm told no against this. He said no. Two yeses. Oh, yeah. no, don't always, do this. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this. Well, no, wait. What you can do is you can, you can uh, have me vote for you by proxy. That's <laughs> unfair. Yeah, but you just have to sign something saying I accept whatever vote Professor Manning cast on my behalf. That was wrong. I don't know if I trust that. What? How about your vote? I don't know. I don't know. No, you said no. No, I heard. No, it's not a two force member. There's force here, and a force here, like usual, and a force there. That's where the cable attaches. That's a three-fourths member if I ever saw one. And I have seen them before. So there's there's that. So it's so we still have two unknowns at B. Uh, and don't necessarily know anything about the directions, so we'll belabor it, we'll go ahead and put them in. You kind of do though, right? Huh? You kind of do though, right? Because up at E. Yeah, it's going, but it, uh -huh. it doesn't matter. Because if we get a negative, we get a negative. Uh, it's easy to spend more time on trying to guess which way they go than it would be just to solve it and be done. Uh, what about C? What kind of force is it C now? Frappy, aroundy type forces? Moment? Is there a moment there because of this pulley? Heck no, not with the bearings I get from Earl down at Ace. Give me, give me. No moment caused by those things. I guess it was like. <laughs> not me. I get that by poor sand in my bearings right to start work harder. Or better than anybody else. <laughs> what do I put at C? Pin connection to a pulley. What do we usually do with pin connections? We usually do this kind of thing. This is no different. It's just a pin connection. Something's yanking on the poor thing. It's yanking back. So we got to do something with that. Let's see if I have a something already down. No. I'll just put them in some way. CY and CX. Uh, how many unknowns? Let's see. AY we already know. AX we know. So we already know that one. BX, BY. We've got we've got five unknowns. What do we do? Vote again? Because no. everybody knows physics is a democracy. You find a little bit A. What? Find a little bit A. Well, we've got five unknowns. So uh, we can do a little bit. If we sum the moments about A, we'll have one moment equation, but still with two unknowns in it, because every other force goes through A. So it, it, it cuts things down a bit, but we still have one equation, two unknowns. If we go and additionally do the moment about some other point, it just brings a Y back into it. So we'll so we, we may have to do those, 
but maybe we can do a, a bit more somewhere else. And then maybe we can go do something else and that eliminates some of the unknowns in that drawing because we'll find them out in another drawing. Yeah, we can do EDB. How many unknowns will it have? Uh, there's two reactions here, but we know one of them. There's two here. We don't know either one. What about the force there? Yeah, assuming the tension in the line is the same area. So, so we could certainly do EDB. All right, I'm going to erase this one because we've done it. I'll leave that little part up there just to help us because we are going to do a member now that's got... So we've got EDB. Uh, which way did I have the forces? I think they were like that. Is that right for E? EY we don't know, EX we do know, we'll check mark by it. And B will be equal and opposite to those as drawn, so I'll go ahead and do that, keep it straight until I know better. Is that okay? Is that how I had EX and EY in there originally? on the part I just erased. And what else? The, the tension at D. And we know we know its direction because cables can only pull. Can we solve that one? Yeah, we sure can. That has three unknowns. Uh, no, that has, that has four unknowns, doesn't it? That has four unknowns, because we still don't know EY. Uh, oh no, D we know, D we know, of course we know that. That's the 981. Okay, sorry, so we got that. All right, so we have three unknowns and three equations. The sum of the forces in X and Y and the moment about any point we so choose. Probably makes sense to sum the moments about B because then EY is the only force left. So, why don't you go ahead with that a little bit. Forces in the X, let's see. EX plus 981 equals EX, which is 2698. Is that correct? The two, uh, the two right facing forces equals the one left facing force. And, and so we only have that one unknown. So we know Bx now. Just good. Check it off. <coughs> I don't know where I wrote it down. 1717. 1717. Oh, there it is. 1717. bit done. Just keep going. That's all we can do. Uh, obviously, EY equals BY. Don't even need to write that down. So, I guess we can then sum the moments. About what point? Go ahead. Choose one. Doesn't matter. Anyone you want. I guess B makes a little more sense just because actually it doesn't because there's one unknown at either one. It doesn't matter which one we do. Uh, 
I guess the smallest difference is we know the moment arm with D with respect to B. We don't know it with respect to E. It's not a big deal, but it's just one less chance for something to goof up. We're not into that. So we'll go ahead and sum up about B. Uh, so we got EX. What's its moment arm? EX is a counterclockwise moment. What's its moment arm? Two meters. You want to say two meters? Anybody agree, or somebody got something else? It's not. It's not this whole distance here. No. It's the, remember, the perpendicular distance to the line of action, which then is the two meters. So that's the only counterclockwise moment, and that must equal, wait, that must, yeah, that must equal the clockwise moment, which is D and its moment arm is half a meter because of the pulley. Uh-oh. No unknown? Yeah, don't forget, it, it's easy to miss that EY also has a moment. And it's in the same direction as D is with respect to B. So there's the unknown in this equation. There's only one good we can find it. Um, and its moment arm is two and a half. 2.5 and so we can find then EY. And once we find EY, uh, then we've got BY because they're equal and opposite. What is that? 1962. Good, so we're making some progress. Uh, BY, that's positive, so we got BY in the right direction. Um, we've got BX now. Do we have AY? We've got EY. Do we now have AY? Was that on the original drawing I erased? Yeah, because they're related by just the uh, the weight. AY plus EY equals 981. So now we've got AY. We just haven't written it down. What's it come out to be? Minus 981. So let me make sure the directions are the same as in my picture. Yep. So that should have been the other way around. So uh, we're left with, uh, let's see, we've got all of E, all of A, all of B, all we need is C. Right? Let's see if we can't make that even easier, because we can just solve this. Not too terribly big a deal. But There's the pulley. Any forces on it? 
Yeah, it's got it's got uh, well, it's got equal and opposite to whatever I drew here. So we'll put those in C X and C Y like that. Any other forces? Yeah, it's got the the cable on it, so it's got that which we know 981. Any other forces on it? There's a force missing. This is the one function. D. Yeah, the other The cable pulls. That way as well. So what are CX and CY? All done. Bless you. All done. Perfect time. No. Oh wait, we I went four minutes long. I I owe you guys four minutes someday, some some way. <laughs>